Well, welcome. My name is Harold Bremer, and my current job is the Dean of the Faculty of Kinesiology and Health Studies at the University of Regina. And I hope this is the first in a series of podcasts that I'm going to do with either current students or alumni or future students, faculty, staff, visitors, people that show up on campus that might be interesting to talk to. So today, our very first one is with Savannah Finlayson. And Savannah has a long history here, right, Savannah? Long enough, yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, so there's a lot of exciting things happening in Savannah's life, but she's also had an exciting time here as a student, I think, and has had a lot of great experiences. And so just want to tap into some of those and just have a little bit of a conversation about your time at the U of R. And then I'd like to transition at the end to what's happening and where you're going, because that's pretty exciting. So why don't you begin by telling me and other people who you are, where you're from, and where you grew up? Um, yeah, I'm Savannah Finlayson, and I grew up in Quill Lake, about two hours north of here, a little bit, a little bit longer, um, and then Graduated from Quill Lake, went there from kindergarten to grade 12, took about four years off before I decided what I oh, really? wanted to do in university. I never thought I'd go to university. It was never in the cards for me. Really? And then I realized I had an employer tell me that I should go to school because I, <laughs> I belong in a management role, but he said, you need to go to school. Okay. So I began looking like, well, what's my interest? And my mom and I found the sport rec management degree and uh, applied for that, and really the rest is history. <laughs> okay, well, okay. <laughs> you actually told me before we went live that you didn't actually apply here. Correct. I found the, the first sport management degree I found, like in Canada, was at the U of A Sport Rec and Tourism. Yeah. Um, more focus on the rec and the tourism, <laughs> and I applied to that, but didn't get in because I... Did not care. I had no plan to go to university, so I didn't care about my high school grades. <laughs> uh, so yeah, didn't so I didn't get in and waited another year before applied to the found the U of R applied here, and so it was like a. By the time I was actually interested in going to school, it was like a year and a half to two years by the time I actually started. So, a little bit of a waiting period. So how old were you when you first got here? Um, <clears throat> about four months shy of twenty two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, I don't want to say that's Abby normal, but that is uh, unusual f mm -hmm. for most students. All, all my friends were like 18, 17, 18, <laughs> 19 when I first, I felt so you're old, like, but. You're, you're like a mother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> all right. So uh, what was it about sport and rec management? Because that's what you ended up pursuing here. What was it about that that you found interesting? Um, sports, I was always a sporty kid. Um, even in uh, high school, um, elementary school, I was always like the athlete of the year, the junior athlete of the year, mm -hmm. senior athlete of the year. I was the graduating athlete of the year. So I was never good at sports, but I was a well-rounded <laughs> athlete. I was good, <laughs> mediocre at every sport. <laughs> um, so yeah, hockey, volleyball, and um, baseball were kind of my main three sports, but I did lots of others. And yeah, I think that just being part of a team and stuff like that, it was, it's just how I was grown up. And I thought, I want to be able to enjoy what I do and I enjoy sports. So let's try to make a career out of that. Okay. So tell me a little bit about your undergraduate experience. What was the best experience? What was the worst experience? Um, the best experience? Probably getting this internship, hmm. I would say. And then the worst experience was my whole second year and half of my first year. Mm. About halfway through the first year and all my second year was online because of COVID. Oh, yeah. And I could not learn. <laughs> I I moved home and was doing Zoom classes. And yeah. you just 
the educational experience from then versus my third and fourth year actually being on campus and involved in things, I probably wouldn't be where I am today if classes continued to be on Zoom yeah. and not well, in Regina. So. I concur with you on that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> I hated that time yeah. too. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm glad that's, that's over. Um, what was your favorite class? If you had to pick one. Um, any class? Probably the, my last year, my later, my last year, the fourth year classes like SRS 440 mm -hmm. and kind of those more specific because that one's sponsorship and marketing. Um, so probably the more SRS sport rec focused classes okay. were the better ones, okay. the good ones. Yeah. All right. Well, that's great. He thinks that's great because he taught me that class. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that's actually where I first got to know you really well yeah. uh, in that class. And yeah, it was a nice small class and mm -hmm. a good group of students, actually. Yeah, I had a fun time in that class. <laughs> Maybe you did, too. Maybe not so much. Maybe she's just saying that because she's on the Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, not you, ever. No. <laughs> All right. So um, I know one of the things you did while you were a student is you went on our study abroad. So tell me a little bit about that experience. Yeah, so I that class was international sport marketing in Madrid, Spain. I think the class was like five or six days long, um, but we were there for about 10 days. Mm -hmm. And it was actually very similar to the SRS 440 sponsorship and marketing class. Uh, a little more different because we've really focused on um, kind of the research and on-campus stuff. But that class, we focused on like we did a presentation on and group work on how to like acquire a sponsor. So we pretended to, to be this team and we're like, why would this company want to sponsor us? And I that was that was probably the biggest takeaway from that because mm. um, I we've just never done anything like that. Like it was almost like a backwards it was almost backwards from what we learned yeah. in your backwards point of view from what we learned in the actual class with you. So yeah. okay. I thought that that was kind of interesting and kind of like to build a proposal. So mm -hmm. what was the best thing about that, that experience, that trip? Um, probably Segovia was my mm -hmm. favorite, but I really like history and old buildings and stuff like that. So we went to a, ca a castle there. So yeah. that, I liked Segovia the most. Yeah, we went there this year with the students. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was my first time in Segovia. And oh, really? Yeah, it was. It was. It is amazing. I mean, I've seen other medieval type of cities like mm -hmm. that before, but that aqueduct for me. Oh, yeah. Is, and yeah. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you need to Google that <laughs> because it is amazing. Actually. Yes. Yeah, that one was really cool. We we walked up to the very top of it, and you mm -hmm. could like look out the side and. It's yeah. very cool. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So um, I want to take you back about a year in time. Remember you were doing your field work and talk a little bit about field work and uh, why you chose to do it where you did it and what you did. Um, well, you helped me get my field work. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to do, I know I wanted to work with like a sports team and to eventually go into the pro sports avenue. I've, that's always been the goal is to work for an NHL team and mm. kind of make my way in the pro sports world. So I think that I mainly want to do Cougars because there's something to say about varsity sports. So I reached out to you and thought that you would know if the athletic staff would be interested in having a fieldwork student throughout the summer, even though there's not too much to do. But uh, so, yeah, you – Set me up with Lisa Robinson, the athletic director, or Lisa Robertson, the athletic director here. And the first time I sat down with her, she said, actually, we're just going to pay you for a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, just to explain that a little bit. So you completed your field work term, which is typically four months. Yeah. So I did that from uh, May to August last summer. So this time last year, and then the day my hours were up, I started getting paid the next day. So, and then I've just kind of fallen into the uh, marketing and events assistant post-grad internship. 
Yeah. So, it yeah, just, Savannah continued on in an yeah. internship role, a paid internship role for about nine months, I guess it is, till now. Or, till now, yeah. Yeah. Like that. yeah. Okay. So um, what did you do as part of your field work and internship? What were you doing for My that year? My field work was a lot of, um, mm. like, background work, like, um, a lot of the marketing and advertising, like, assisting uh, Kelsey uh, who does sponsorship and Andrew, who does the marketing and advertising and events, mm-hmm. um, helping them and planning different things. And one of the biggest projects I worked on the summer was creating a student section called Cougar Country. Mm-hmm. So that took a lot of time, a lot of hours. So creating the creating the student section, we tied a sponsor to it. We got signage for it, made an Instagram account, uh, which I ran throughout the year as well, and then. I created a student competition to bring awareness to to the um, student section and to get more students to our games. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was a huge part of my summer, other than writing three 12-page papers for Brandy. (laughs) (laughs) That's a field work requirement. (laughs) There you go. Yeah. But yeah, that was the gist of summer. And then moving into the season, I guess we started with soccer. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, essentially, Andrew taught me to do all the events, all the uh, be the event coordinator. So I wrote scripts for the PA announcer for our game day host, um, coordinated with the digital media team on sponsor logos uh, on the screen on, on the big board in the gym for basketball, volleyball. Um, <clears throat> I would contact visiting coaches. Uh, usually a week before they would arrive, like the Monday before they came on a Friday, uh, give them general information about the weekend, where their team rooms were, the code to their rooms, everything you could Hmm. imagine. Um, And then during the games, I was always there. I hired, trained, and managed about 35 to 40 staff, about 35 of them being student staff. Uh, in ticket sales, our ticket managers, our student managers, and then everybody who works in the penalty box, um, on the basketball score table, everything. So that was a big part of the job as well. Mm. Um, yeah, that was kind of like the gist of what I would do. Okay. Wow. So <clears throat> what, are, what are the kind of takeaways? What did you appreciate about that experience? Um, I think that Andrew learned, uh, learned very early on that I was very motivated and <laughs> very organized and very efficient. And, you know, he would, we'd go to the first sport and he would show me the ropes of how to run a basketball game, volleyball game, hockey game. And he just let me have the freedom after that. And he was always there for support. Obviously anything I needed, he was just phone call, text, or we sat in the same office. Um, so that was a huge part of it. And then just letting them, letting me have the freedom to, you know, make my own way. And I changed scheduling so that it was online. Normally they would just text people, Hey, can you work this weekend? And I changed it to, so it was an online scheduling. So people wouldn't, students would know their schedule like a month in advance. Um, they knew where they were working, when they were working, who they were working with, um, everything like that. So I think that one of the takeaways would just be how fun it was, honestly. Mm. I think I think it was just so seamless from doing field work to starting. And then Andrew just showed me once or twice and was like, have your creative freedom. And I think that the level of trust was very appreciated. That's nice. In me, so. Yeah, very much so. Okay, so I'm going to go back. Uh, you mentioned creating the... Uh, Cougar Country, right? That student section. So I want you to put on kind of your manager hat and evaluate your performance and the outcome of that initiative. How'd it go? I think it went pretty good. Obviously well supported by the Rams, so shout out to them. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I have a lot of ideas uh, for next year as well. Mm. Um, You know, maybe t-shirts. You come to 10 games and you get a f- T-shirt for your support. Um, different initiatives like that. Um, certain the Cougar Country student section games that we had in the competition, like trying to do um, 
like t- tailgates for that either in 187 or mm. 185 something like that okay. gather the students you know pizza beverages whatever and have like more of a tailgate um, that kind of thing so lots of ideas for the next intern of course yeah, but that's great yeah i think it went pretty good the first year just having the signs up um having the instagram i think it has around 300 followers oh, in really? the first couple months we had it so that was nice um, better than nothing, of course. I mean, there's always room for improvement, but I think for the first year of running something, it was pretty good, and I've kind of set up a good base for future yeah. interns to kind of run with it and do their own things. So, okay. So, tell me, just one way in which you've grown because of your fieldwork and internship experience. Um. I think I'm more mellow. <laughs> I think like I've always been very structured and detail orientated and this is my schedule and this is how I'm running with it. Um, but I think in in, event, in events, I mean, there's a million things that'll pop up in a night and you've got to <laughs> solve it. You've got to change your structure. You've got to change your game plan. And so I think that just, yeah, Mellow is a loose word, but just being more relaxed and open and just uh, knowing to expect the unexpected yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's cool. The, um, yeah, I think that that's, that happens in most jobs, especially <laughs> if you're in any kind of a, a management role is there's always fires that just show mm-hmm. up you can plan all you want, but stuff still happens. And so that's, that's by by the end of the season, you know, it was like, okay, well, you almost expect them to happen. <laughs> and you know, you can kind of start to judge like, well, it's basketball and this is happening. So this is probably gonna happen because of it. And yeah. you can you get good at it and you can kind of plan ahead and like expect it to happen and you can plan for that. So Okay. So I took a seminar one time. I've been in many. Seminars, I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> just one. Well, <laughs> I I took this a long time ago when I first started working, actually, uh, professionally, not in my current role or even as an academic role. But I remember going to this seminar, and and uh, I don't remember a lot of what went on over those couple of days, but I do remember that workshop leader saying one thing: that if you can find a job where 60% of the time you're doing what you love, you have a job that most people will never have. So I know you loved lots of your job. Is there something you didn't like about your, you may, maybe just didn't love nearly as much as the other stuff? That's a hard question. Hmm. Um. What I didn't love. Well, maybe not. Maybe that's too strong of a word. But <laughs> that you know, you just rather not be doing that. You'd rather do something else. It's hard because I just I loved all of it. There's <laughs> nothing better than game day. Like just being there and seeing the crowd, and you mm. know, you put all this hard work on, and everybody, your team puts this hard work on, and just seeing the crowd enjoy themselves and stuff like that. There's, there's no better feeling. Like it was, it was almost like a high, like I just loved Mm. it. Um, so I don't know. The summer was, the summers can be boring because there's not as much to do and there's no Mm. game days. Yeah. I I definitely like being busy and always having something to do. And yeah, the summers off season (laughs) can't afford to golf. What, you know? Yeah. There you go. (laughs) Um, so I, I do want to take you back, uh, last, last year, about this time, you were also applying for school. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. We won't tell Lisa. (laughs) She might've known. I don't know. (laughs) Maybe she did. Anyway, um, talk a little bit about kind of your thoughts about that and why, why you're pursuing that and why... I mean, I think I know why you ended up not pursuing that, but anyway. 
Yeah, so I really wanted to do my master's, and I would still love to do my master's, but I was going to go down to Nashville uh, at Belmont University. They have a master's of sport management. Um, and so I applied. I had a meeting with their dean and another meeting with one of their uh, master students. Um, and I got in and everything. Harold was even a reference for me. Um, but I ended up not going. Well, the biggest reason was I couldn't get a visa fast enough because mm -hmm. I was going to start uh, in August. So that was a huge reason. And then just financially, I you know I started paying my student debt as soon as I finished school. And I paid for my entire degree. I didn't have help from parents or anything. Mm -hmm. So the bank and the government support supported me. So a lot of student debt. And, you know, you start paying that off and reality sets in. And it's like, okay, well. Maybe I should tackle this and see where I can go. And, mm. and now I feel like I don't really need it. Okay. Well, I hope someday you'll think about it. I mean, oh, there are other options it'll than always going be back in the, full time, right? Like, yeah, it'll always be in the back of my mind for sure. Yeah. yeah I'd encourage you in that regard. Um, it's an opportunity to keep growing, mm -hmm. right? And pursuing new paths and new opportunities that will open up as a result of that. So, Okay. We're coming near the end, even though this hasn't been too bad, has it? No. Nope. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so uh, you've been working at this, and clearly over the last little bit, you've been, you know, your internship is going to be over here soon. So you're thinking about what am I going to do next? So take us through that thought process and what you did about that. Yeah, so I just started... a applying for jobs, like looking on Indeed and then a huge one for... Well, that, what is Indeed? Just in, Indeed sure. Jobs. Okay. Yeah, it's a website for to find any kind of job. But the site that I followed the most was called Teamwork Online, and it is sports-specific. It has college sports, Canadian, uh, NCAA. It has every single pro sports. Right now they're currently hiring for the Paris Olympics. Mm. Like all sport-related jobs are on there. Okay. So I really followed that one. And then select teams that I would follow as well. And just, I probably applied for like 30 jobs in two months. Okay. So it was a lot. And did you hear back from 30 jobs? No, nope, I probably heard <laughs> back from five or six. Okay. You know, you get a call from a recruiter and then you don't make it to the next, to the actual interview stage or you make it to the interview stage, but you don't make it to the second. And so it's, it was, it's been a long process, but. Okay. So when did you actually start that process? Um, probably at the very end of the season and around in February, February. Okay. started lightly kind of looking and then really got into it in March was looking constantly a couple times a day, check in to see if anything new was posted. And, uh, I'm open to going anywhere. I kind of went to school so that I can leave Saskatchewan. So I was <laughs> checking jobs in Saskatoon, Calgary, Edmonton, even down in the States and like Denver and different areas. So. Okay. So where did you get... An interview at? Um, I had an interview with the Saskatoon Blades, the Regina Pats, um, Hockey Calgary, and the Oilers Entertainment Group Okay, are my big interviews. Yeah. Okay. And so where did you end up getting an offer from? So I got an offer from Hockey Calgary, mm -hmm. and the next day I declined it. And about four hours later, I got a call from the Oilers <laughs> and was offered that job that I had applied for. So going and, there, starting July 3rd. It? I took it. Yeah, starting <laughs> July 3rd. Well, that's great. That's exciting. So tell us a little bit about the job that you took. What's it going to be like? What are you going to do? Yeah, so it's basically how it's kind of like what I'm doing now. It's like a 10-month program where I start out as a sales associate. So I will work for the Oilers Entertainment Group right at Rogers with the sales team. Um, and for the most part, so those that sell tickets for the Oilers, um, all their account executives and stuff, they also sell for the Oil Kings, their WHL team. Yep. And so they will, they call it their sales academy. So there'll be one-on-one -on -one training and group training. And they go through the whole process of selling single game tickets, multi-group tickets, uh, multi-game tickets, that kind of thing. Um, birthday party packages and they teach you how to <laughs> sell everything and then so for this year I'll be selling tickets for the Oil Kings and then okay. you work a couple Oil Kings games throughout the month 
each month. And then the idea is that like I... Like on the event side. Um, so they would have a ticket selling booth oh, okay. at the game so that when you're there, you can s- inform fans like, hey, we have a birthday party package yeah. or just different things like that or group rates and stuff like that and just kind of building a general awareness for it and for future games. So that's what I'll be doing at those mm-hmm. games. And then the idea is that when the 10 months is up, I will be an account executive for okay. the Oilers. So it's a, a training period that they put you through. Basically, yep. yeah. Okay. Yep. Nice. So that's very exciting. You're excited about it? Or? Yeah. I think that it's it's been the goal for around six, seven years now. You know, when you think, I, I've always wanted to do pro sports, so what I think of is working for the Oilers and living in Edmonton. And um, it's, I cried. Oh. <laughs> when I got the, I, I cried. I was literally moving out of my house that day, and I just put the phone down and I started crying. Just, you wow. know, it's been like five, six years of pretty hard work, lots of volunteering on the Kin Society, volunteering with the women's hockey team, um, lots of that kind of thing. And I wouldn't be here if I didn't put myself in those situations. Yeah. So it's been a lot of hard work over the last few years wow, to get where exciting. I am. That, that's, I can see you're really excited about yeah. this. It's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. That, how does it, how does your, what do your parents think about this? I don't think my dad has ever wanted me to leave. I think <laughs> if it was up to him, I'd live at home with him forever. Um, but I th- he was actually at my house when I got the call because he's a truck. He was helping me move, and he's seen me break down crying, and I think that it actually dawned on him, like, okay, her dream just came true. So he, very happy. My mom was, like, screen- screaming it through the rooftops. <laughs> her friends were, like, texting me, congratulating me, and I was like, Mom, I got it, like, 20 minutes ago. Can you just wait till I sign the contract? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's super. Yeah. Uh, so Contract exciting. is signed though, though, yeah. so everyone can okay. know. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, so that's fantastic. You've got the next couple of years kind of sorted out. What are your long-term ambitions? Where do you want to be in 10 years, 15 years? Um, well, I actually really like what Kelsey does here with sponsorship and development. And I think that I could see myself in one of those roles. Mm. Um I don't plan to do game day forever. I would eventually like a family, mm-hmm. um, and that's not so feasible working 40 <laughs> games a season. Um, <laughs> so I think that I would be really good at sponsorship and, and sales, and I think that that was one of the reasons why I applied for this. Mm-hmm. Um, I was technically a little bit overqualified um, for the job requirements, Um just with all the experience that I've gained in the last year specifically, they were very impressed with my resume. Um, But I think that getting into the ticket sales and learning that aspect is just, so if I can build up out of that and Mm -hmm. kind of excel in that and eventually make my way to sponsorship development, that kind of area, that would be the plan, the goal. (laughs) Okay. Well, that's exciting. Well, I'm looking forward to watching you uh, progress over the next few years. Well, you have to come to a game. I will have to come to a game. Well, I do get to Edmonton every once in a while because that's where I grew up. And, mm-hmm. and I already told you where you should live. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> so uh, we'll keep that advice off the air. Yeah. Um, but just in closing, well, there may be um, current students or future students that are going to watch the bits and pieces of this or the entire thing, one bit of advice. Listen to Brandy West McMaster. (laughs) Put yourself in uncomfortable positions. Put yourself out there. Do the things that make you uncomfortable. That was probably some of the best advice. And boy, did she make me do a lot of that. So, um, But it's always made me better. So Yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. Uh, Volunteer. Join your kin society, work at Cougar Games, do whatever you can. Well, I want to say it's been a pleasure actually getting to know you. I think (laughs) the first time we met was in 440. Officially, yep. Yeah. You bought me pizza our first year, though. Oh, yeah, that's right. My first year orientation, we had pizza up in 222. (laughs) That's right. That's a long time ago. That was before COVID. Yeah, that was like five. Yeah. And then... um, September would be five years. That's all. <laughs> Can I say that? 
maybe we'll eat uh, anyway. Um, that's fantastic. So thank you very much for joining me. You're the, how should you say, the inaugural interview, <laughs> as it were. And I really appreciate you taking the time and your willingness to do this. Voluntold. There you go. <laughs> but sincerely, very sincerely, yeah. all the very best as you move on to Edmonton. Enjoy the city and what it has to offer. And I think the work experience is going to be just fantastic. Oh, yeah. Very excited. Yeah, great. All the very best. Well, thanks very much for joining us. And with that, we'll say goodbye. <laughs>